I'm here with James, he's actually one of my rebuilders here, and we're trying something new, a new series of things, and that is what went wrong. So we're gonna be taking transmissions that we've just received for whatever reason, then we're rebuilding them. We're gonna be taking it apart, and we're gonna try and figure out what went wrong and why. This is a grotty one. Yes, it's out of a 200 series that are used in the mining industry. This one's yeah. a mining industry. All right, <clears throat> so how about we get started on this? Cool. Oh, I need a sledgehammer. Clearly someone ate their weedies this morning and it wasn't me. Alright, next. In the back of these, they've actually got a bit of a bearing. This one actually feels a bit, a bit dry and a bit rough, but... Nothing that bad, we won't take that part any more than that. The problem is not there, let's continue. The good thing about this bench is that <coughs> the whole bench is actually angled, not just back, but also from right to left. So all the oil that comes off or drains down into the corner, goes down into a big bucket and actually goes into the big recycle cube behind us. You replace that bearing every time? Yeah. Actually, it's a bit loose. But... All right, we'll get that ready because that's going to go in the wash along with that. We might leave that one on. You throw the old one in here? Uh, we'll keep it for reference. Check with the new one. All right, so we're just taking the bolts out of the pump. You're gonna take the pan off first or you take the pump out? Take the pan off first. Just yeah. taking the bolts out while I'm here. I'm gonna turn it slightly just so they can see. Look at the oil. Black. What a beautiful color. That is, that is burnt and it is black. It's a synthetic oil though, I can tell. Just by the colour on it, it's got a bit of a tinge to it. But that is badly burnt, that is. <coughs> Take this, yeah. So what do you reckon is going to be in here? Well, besides it's the not, burnt oil, it's not, it's not horrible. No. It's not full of burnt bits. I've seen a lot worse. Got a little bit of material on the magnets. You no know, trouble, when you see it burnt like this, is it burnt because you've got burnt clutches? <coughs> Or is it burnt because the thing's just overheated? Now, these 200 series mm -hmm. do have a habit of actually overheating themselves, especially in soft sands and that. Mm -hmm. So it'll be a bit of a mystery price. So at this time, we don't know what's caused this, whether it's <coughs> been burnt by the talk about it. The magnets, and it's got, what, four magnets in here? And they've all got a little bit of slime on them, but just if that it's was a, that if it was a big blow-up, mm -hmm. this thing would look like a porcupine mm -hmm. with stuff all over it. So at the moment, we'll put that aside. Okay. We'll keep going. So this is the valve body we're taking off now, after he gets the wiring loom out of the way. And when we do the Nomad valve bodies, this is actually the section that we're talking about on the underneath. All the solenoids can be tested or replaced if we're at all sus on any of them. Because sometimes the solenoids can actually be the cause. Looks like you know the exact place to take out. Do. So it's almost sad. You've been, I've done that many. Yeah, I've got to say, you've done you know, at least one or two of these. Yes, yeah, just a couple. One or two hundred. <laughs> Get this valve body off. Now, we'll have a look on the top of the valve body. You'll get a lot of sediment buildup that doesn't make itself into the pan. And in this case, everything actually looks really good. There's no sediment buildup on it, which is pretty good. All right, well, we'll put that one aside, move these out of the way. 
But we'll have a quick look in there because by this stage we can actually see all the clutches and start seeing if there's any signs of anything. Most of them. Bit yeah. of clearance in the background, but other mm -hmm. than that, all the accumulators coming out, the springs. We'll keep going, we'll keep pulling it apart. Get him out of the way. Accumulators. Now as we're going, we're also checking for the seals. Make sure the seals are pretty soft and that they're not hard and brittle. They can go hard and brittle with age or also any transmission that goes from being very, very hot to being just cool overnight. If, if you go through enough of those cycles or a lot of those cycles, the rubber goes hard pretty quick. This one's not too bad. We always laugh and say about taxis. Well, ta taxis will last a million kilometres because they never turn them off. They just keep putting yeah. new drivers in them and run. So they're always running warm all the time. Another little thing, we always check in for the wiring to see how brittle the wiring is. A lot of times when it's been hot for a long time and with age, this is actually a little bit stiff. I would say that that actually wire is a little bit stiffer than normal, mm -hmm. but it's not brittle. This is actually the one. That's the main case plug that goes in, and these are all the plugs that go to the solenoids. And um, we got your two temp sensors. Where the oh, there they are, two. Mm -hmm. So one temp sensor measures the oil going to the cooler, which is basically the torque converter, and the other one measures the temperature within the pan. But this wiring is actually didn't Pretty feel too good. Bad. It's all yeah. ply. It's all really good, pliable. There's no crack, breaks, anything. Let's continue. We're going through the middle of it here. Yeah. Yeah. James is just trying to get the the sleeve off. They're crimped on, and there's only one way to get them off. You've got to be destructive to get it off. And then underneath there, there's actually a roll pin. One little piece at a time. I'll use this to wipe my hands again and next time I get the... What is that? That's the other sleeve. That's about the worst it is so far. Yeah. And then underneath here, actually a little a roll pin. At least that, that bit's easier to get out than what the sleeve was to get yeah. off. Okay. Then comes the manual shaft. Is that rusted or? No, I think it's just got a lot of dirt on it. That's all it is, it's just got mine dust on it. Actually, it looks pretty good. We need to remove these tubes in here that seal. Yeah. Mm. These are the three. There's just three of them? One, just just two, the three. three. Yep. They, they seal. go through and they go into the actual drums on the inside. All right, let's go. Um. Have a look. The o rings are all right. The first three sealing rings are on here. So we're not just checking for damage, we're also checking for cause. What could have been the cause? So we're checking to make sure all the rings are in place. All right. I love these. They're not quite quite butt joints, what would you call it? <laughs> They're really hard to <laughs> see how much detail they're in them, but there's actually quite a lot of detail in how they join together. So even as they move and open and shut, they remain sealed mm -hmm. the whole way. So that one's fine. Yep. I this continue is... to take these off and check these ones out. This is generally where the um, the damage is on AB60s and A750s as well. Very similar sort of a setup. <laughs> Well, all three pump rings oh. looked all right. We will take that apart, the pump apart in a minute. We're after a good start. There's four clutches in this, and the first one is burnt. Oh, yeah, look at that. There we go. So this one <coughs> has been slipping quite heavily. But not only are the frictions burnt, but the steels are really heavily burnt. I'll actually lay them out. So they're actually a little bit hard to see what they're dirty, but you can actually see that they got big, giant burn marks all the way around them to the point where they've actually crystallized. So all these steels are shot. Frictions are heavily burnt to the point where they're, the grooves in them are pretty well gone. First clutch of the day, and already, it's still, it's still a puzzle. Why did it do it? Well, obviously, all of these drums 
look fine, all the splines look fine, the thrust in there, it's fine, there's no problem in there, splines, the bushes all look good, that bush, bearing, all we're doing at the moment is going right over the sprag race, where that goes. What about that one? That clutch is actually really good. You can still clutch. see the riding on the friction. Yeah, that one, that, actually, that mm. clutch is really good. Mm -hmm. Yep, so that clutch was unaffected by whatever happened. Next, ah, that drum was, whoop, what was that? Ah, oh, bearing. Now this is the surface where those rings from the back of the pump run in here. Sometimes they can actually wear out in there. There's no grooves. The roller bearing, we'll have a closer look at that. But it's running smooth, the spline seems to be good. We've got to take all the drums out yet and check for all the, the rubber seals. We'll do that. Go for the next one. Yep. So there's the hub that runs on the two clutches in this. You can tell that something's been, something's gotten hot in there. Sprague seems to be all right. Thrust is fine. Yep, thrust is fine. Got to check the sprag underneath the microscope to see if it's flattened. Some of the dogs on the teeth can actually flatten. Splines are all right, so that'll need a closer look. This is the C1 clutch. It's burnt. Now the C1 clutch in an AB60 is always a culprit. It's the sm one of the smallest clutches mm -hmm. in the whole box. And there's what, one, two, three, four, five. There's six clutches in here. <coughs> and that one's badly burnt to the point it's actually blackened the steels. Hotter in the middle and not as bad as it comes out. So that tells you a story that if you're looking at a clutch and you find that it's hotter in the centre and not as burnt on the outside, it's actually telling you in the way or why it was slipping in the first place. So so far that's two clutches slipping. That one looks good. That one's fine. Yeah, that one's like the day it went in. Mm -hmm. That's perfect. The frictions are good. Yep. Start making more room here because I feel we're going to be using most of this bench to do this. Bearings are alright, bushes are alright. Mm -hmm. You can see that's gotten really hot. It hasn't gone all the way through, but you can see the burn mark all the way on the all around the inside of the run. But that would have been just from that clutch that was burnt. Splines are good. Bearing looks good. Ceiling rings are all loose, they're all intact, to make sure, although we didn't lose clearance, they're all fine, all the, all the bearings and thrusts don't have any marks on them, and I, the reason why I'm twisting them, they're actually quite a solid, they're not rubber, these are actually like almost a plastic, <coughs> and I'm t twisting them, I'm twisting them gently just to see if they're just going to snap, and it just tells me how brittle they are, and they're quite pliable for plastic, so they're fine. Mm -hmm. Get another sprag. There's another sprag, it actually runs on the back of that drum that was hanging out of that hole. You know it's what sprags are, or called one-way clutches, which means they allow the drum to turn one way and they won't go backwards. When you're building, you're gonna make sure that you put them on the right way. <laughs> Otherwise, what happens is that drum turns the opposite way and locks in the wrong direction. Ask me how I know that. <laughs> <laughs> We've all made that mistake once in your life. How important it is. That is a brake clutch that runs around that spray. The outside. And it goes to show you the difference. Look at the size of these frictions compared to the size of that friction. Isn't it tiny? Like, it makes you think, all right, what load did they think was actually going to be on that friction 
compared to this little piddly one, but yet this is the one that actually burns out. So. All these frictions look quite reasonable. Uh, yep. Checking to make sure the teeth aren't worn. Frictions aren't worn. We won't be using any of these frictions anyway, regardless of what they like. The whole lot goes in the bin. Bearings go in the bin, all the seals, all the rings, the whole lot all goes in the, the bin, the oil filters, the whole lot. What have no, we got um, here? This that is... clutch that was running around the sprag, that yeah. is actually the piston and drum that applies it. Well, there's nothing wrong with the clutch. I'm not mm -hmm. suspecting anything wrong in here. Nothing wrong with the outside. We've got to get all these pistons out, which we won't be doing on camera unless we think that there's something going on. It's got a good spring reply, so that one's good. We have a gear set. First one. Yep. These are a bit of a trick to do. When you do them, you've got to side to side. And you're also trying to twist it to see if there's any wobble in each one of them. you also got to go through, normally after you've washed, you've got to go through and check every single tooth. But I don't think I've ever seen many of these ever have a problem. No, no in terms of hard parts. The, the size, they're a big planetary. They are. Which you would expect for a 200 series, mm. that not only is a three tonne vehicle when it's all loaded up, but it also has a three and a, three and a half tonne towing capacity with a stonking V8. And people obviously modify Modify and put well, bull big, bars, big winches, power. and everything yep. on them. So yep. you would expect this is actually the same auto as we used in all, in all our conversions for the, the 79 series. Bush, no problem there. Mm -hmm. Let's continue. It's the annulus for, for the planetary. For the planetary, yep. In other words, this is the outside gear. At a glance, everything looks really, really, really good. Continue on. The next brake clutch, which looks pretty good. Yeah, another one looks brand new. Mm -hmm. Do we actually have a history on how many Ks this auto are done by any chance? No idea. No. A vastly different friction, this one. That one's perfect. So what's the score so far? We've got four good ones and two bad ones. <laughs> That's the uh, drum and piston Quite that applies. Piston. Well, we know that one's going to be. Pretty right, we're going to take that apart. Do you keep that with you? You throw that in the. No, I keep it, keep it together. Yep. Next gear set, and see sun gear. Bearings, but there's not a problem with any of the bearings. <laughs> he gets. <laughs> 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 On your face. Teach her not to duck and weave when you're supposed to. <laughs> All these splines are good. That's another. That's a big planetary. Mm. Really big and powerful planetary. That one. That's all good. That was the next brake clutch that actually ran around that drum that you had, which yep. that runs around that. Yep. Have a look at this one. Some of these are really intricate and fancy design. Pretty good. Yeah, that friction's all good. You normally get a telltale straight away off the steels, mm. whether they're showing any heat signs or anything like that. It's just like you wouldn't believe. And that's the odd thing about it. If it was low on oil or something like that, you would actually see more clutches burnt because then you're running low pressure right throughout the whole, the whole lot, whether it be in forward gear or reverse gear. And normally customers would also know that there was an issue early on because low on oil tends to give you signs that something's wrong straight away so they would check you know so we already know that this is not a low on oil it's not a low on pressure either it's this 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 one otherwise like i said it would be more clutches involved since it's two it's telling us a pattern so far so this is another one that goes there nice. what else we got Another drum and piston. Well, we know that one's going to be all right because the clutch is all right. Yeah, let me fix the grotty bench up. I can't work on a dirty bench. James can work on a cave. <laughs> 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 it's like, it's like, 
I can't do it. Draws me bodges. Do you need a hand there, Lassie? I think we should get in there and help him there, Craig. Or, uh, <laughs> uh, let him suffer. Just watching me struggle. It's just no. Like, like my wife. Do you want a hand? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm more determined now because you're asking me. <laughs> Coming. Technical term is not holding. Look at this, just a little circlet. Like it's, <laughs> just a little know, circlet. The technical term is not holding your tongue right. Considering what you just did to that circlet, it's actually in pretty good nick. <laughs> the biggest sprags, you get a lot of sprags in these things, mm. don't they? And the reason why they got a lot of sprags is that the AV60 transmission is one of the few is what we call a transition shift. And that is that it doesn't necessarily go clutch to clutch, release the clutch and apply a clutch. It tends to keep a clutch on and then just apply another one and then apply another one. For the most part, that's how it works. When it gets up into changing it from fourth into fifth, then it does its first transitional gear, which means it needs what we call a clutch to clutch, where it has to release and then grab. And, and then the, the next one is after that, which is sixth gear, is just a grab one. They're normally the best, one of the best to tune. Some cars are really, really hard to tune because they're a clutch to clutch. There's transitionals or ones that just tend to keep a clutch on and then just stack more on as you go. They're really good, but they need sprags because they release the same way. Nothing wrong with that, that big sprag's really good. That is the last clutch hub. Lots of splines in that one. One, two, three, four. Four splines, internal gear, two internal bearings. Oh, three internal bearings. They all look really good from a hard parts point of view. What we mean by hard parts is all these solid bits. All these hard parts bits, there's no damage on any of them. It's that's, just the clutches. That's your low reverse. This Clutch one's a low runs, reverse. Runs around that hub. Now this one. Oh, I thought I saw a wear mark for a moment, but Gener no, generally not even they're that. pretty good. And the reason for that is that they're always boosted. Although the AB60 is fairly well the boosted transmission most of the time, but they when you on put the them into reverse, they tend to really ramp the pressures up. On them. So what pressure do you see in the dyno in reverse? Oh, about 300 PSI. 300 PSI in reverse. Mm -hmm. So On the big block. And they're a good size clutch, and there's several of them in there. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's seven fairly decent sized friction. They're not as big as some, but much bigger than the others. So nothing wrong with that one. So that's another one. That's the last one. Last one. One more part. It's the output shaft. Yep. And the last planetary, or the rear planetary. All the surfaces. How's the case? Well, inside everything else looks good. Everything's pretty good. All right, there's a bearing. Now, when we go in, we'll actually clean all these parts. Let's take this pump apart. I want to make the pump apart. All the, every steel's got to be done, so everything's got to be cleaned and stripped right down completely. <coughs> They'll check every single rubber seal to make sure that it hasn't become hard, because if they become hard and stiff, they won't apply, or they won't be able to hold pressure anymore because they don't release against the side of the drum. They tend to stay like, like you know, basically like arthritis. Their hands like here, they can't actually move. <clears throat> so they can't actually move out and have a natural formation. And when they do that, they tend to lose a lot of pressure. We haven't seen any of that. The rings are all perfect. The accumulators are all perfect. There's no metal, which means all the bearings, the thrust, everything else has been perfect. The natural fact there's been no sign of within the transmission itself, um, other, other than the two burnt clutches. We'll just take a look back. The pumps on these AB60 is one of the few. It's got about 20 bolts holding the two halves together. Some of the forwards you see has got like four or five bolts. Yeah. You know. Well, four ladies only have five bolts. Five bolts. And yeah. he's got like 20 bolts. So. They are a very sealed. Oh, you almost got it. There we go. So, let me have a look at this. This is the pump. Throw it on here for a sec. So we're going to check to make sure it turns perfectly. It 
has not picked up on this side. It has not picked up on that side. The gears are nice and black. Whenever the gears are mostly black, which means they've had very little wear on them, there's no heat in there. You get very different types of pumps. <clears throat> this is what you call a gear driven pump. And then you got other ones with like a vein driven, which means they haven't, they've got like little veins and those ones tend to blow up mm -hmm. a lot. Torque converter was not in very deep in this. Looks like the torque converter was only in about four mil when it should have been in probably a little bit deeper. Or am I looking, no, no, definitely. Torque converter wasn't in very, very deep, but that's not the reason for any issues. The tangs are there. Everything is good. Torque converter bush is tarnished and gone off. And on one side, it's much more tarnished than the other side. All right, so what went wrong? These valve bodies are not known for um, leak down problems. They do have boost valve problems mm -hmm. on these, the same as the A750 in the 100 series, and that one, that A750 is in lots of different autos. They can have boost problems, but they tend not to do this, all right? These valve bodies are fairly bulletproof. <clears throat> we found no fault here. So whatever caused this really is not within this transmission. So it tells the tale. Really, those two clutches, they're well known to us as what the possible causes are. One of them is overheating. The transmission just got really, really hot. The torque converters can generate a massive amount of heat. So if you're in sand doing um, what you should be doing in low range, but you're in high range, and it doesn't take much. Most people don't realize that these things can go from 60, 70 degrees to 170 degrees in possibly you know, two minutes. It doesn't take long at all. And in that time, oil gets so hot that the friction coherence changes, the clutches just start to slip. The pressure starts to drop a little bit, but it only drops on the gears that it's actually applying for, all right? That's why it doesn't burn other clutches because whatever happened, it happened in that gear, in that one gear that it was in, all right? That this clutch has actually slipped. If it was low pressure overall, like other way, we had permanent low pressure yeah. yep. or we had permanent low on oil or something like that, then we would see many more. We would actually see multiple clutches that are burnt the same way. Mm -hmm. So therefore you think, all right, what can cause multiple clutches to burn? But we've basically only got two clutches, all right? And they basically share the same gear. They're running the same gear. So therefore the problem is in one gear. I'm gonna say it was in first gear. Mm -hmm. It was in high range and I believe it would have been in soft sand or doing something under a lot of strain, like trying to get up a steep part of the hill, mm -hmm. towing possibly, who knows? We, you'd never know, you've got three tons, you could be towing three tons, you could be going up a really, really big bit and not think, oh, I've just driven around, I'm to this spot, I just gotta get up this little hill and not bother to put it in low range, you're just gonna try it in high range. But the torque converter generates so much heat, like massive amount of heat. You can't turn lock up on because you're barely moving. So lock up cannot help you in that case, right? <laughs> cool as can, big pans certainly can, mm -hmm. because the transmission can only flow at four liters per minute. So if you can turn around and give the pan another three, four liters, all of a sudden you've got another minute before the oil starts to recycle starts to really back. Warm up. So you've yeah. got another minute of driving using the oil that's still in the pan that hasn't had a chance to get hot yet, all right? <laughs> I don't even think it was that, all right? I really do believe that this is just a classic being in high ratio under a lot of strain when it possibly should have been in low range. I don't have the torque converter here, so we really can't tell. However, when a torque converter is really, really hot, the bushes, the status of bushes go blue, all right? The pump bush goes blue on the inside. It starts to pick up material and the inside of the, the pump goes blue. There are no signs to that, to that at all. So for our first episode ever mm -hmm. of what went wrong, we only had two clutches boot uh, for a 200 series. Everything else looks to be good, but the oil is just stunk. And if you were here, if it was smell of vision, you'd be turning <laughs> in a nose. Not exactly diff oil, but it's pretty, you know, we, we're getting there. It's a halfway to diff oil. So if you have any questions, please put them in the comments below. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> 
If you've had something like this happen, please put it in the comments. What vehicle would you like to actually see us do a what went wrong episode like we do transmissions here all the time? We'll do a little pano of all the, the gearboxes behind Cameraman Craig over there of all the ones we're going to do. We're certainly going to be doing the Ford Ranger, mm -hmm. the Y62, GU, all the classics so we can try and work out. And if we ever get a few big blow ups, they're really good because sometimes they can be hard to pick mm. what went wrong because they're just, just so every, much everything of a, is an epic mess. Yeah. It's like, yeah. where do you start and where do you finish, right? Please. <laughs> Thanks, James. No worries. For coming and giving me a hand and he'll be with me for all the different series and that. <clears throat> And he's good because I can mock him and he doesn't chase me around <laughs> with a hammer like the other ones do. So um, please like, subscribe. It means a lot to us to subscribe. Get the bell on and um, we'll see you next time we get to tear one of these lovelies right. apart. There. Yeah. And I'll see which camera's best. This one, I'll come over here and I'll do this because I can actually see what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> Cameron Craig going, too close, too close. You did good. Oh. Fair to average. Average. <laughs> <laughs> nah, you did better than me. But I've got to go wash my hands. I haven't been on the tools for ages, man. What are you doing to me, doing this crap? <laughs> you know? <laughs>